people have asked why did I choose these inverters instead of the GITL 2000 watt. These all together barely make 2000 watts where the GITL would have made 2000 watts and those are a lot more popular. But I have two very, very good reasons why I have chosen these. They're, because they're two different technologies. These are matching meters where the GITL, it's a race to zero meter. So I'll explain that how it works because it's all dependent of where the CT clamp goes on the wires. The way that my panel is set up, unfortunately, I don't have the privilege to access the wires that come in between the meter and the panel. They're very, very short and hidden behind some kind of a shielding. So the GITL 2000 watt Grita inverter with power limiter has probes that will install to those wires and that system runs on race to zero. So that's how the system works. And I'll explain it to you on a piece of paper because it's a lot easier. So I chose these ones because these are matching meters. So these are hooked up differently. They have CT clamps, but they don't hook up to the main line that comes in between the meter and the panel. They actually hook up to the lines that travel throughout your house. And I'll show you inside the fuse box because it's a little bit confusing. So I want to be very, very clear. And then I'll show you a diagram how these matching meters work. So this is how my box looks like. So this is the main service, right? The main service has two wires traveling directly into the meter. So I have no access to those wires whatsoever. So this is the meter. It literally just, it's a very, very short run directly in there and it's shielded. So I have no access to it whatsoever. It's feeding these bus bars. So there's like two bus bars, one on the left side and one on the right side with a neutral in the middle. And each fuse is hooked up to either or. This is solar one and this is solar two because I'm feeding two separate bus bars and these are the CT clamps so the CT clamps are hooked up to the actual lines that travel inside the house and also the lines are separated each pack of lines corresponds to either the left side or the right side so the line one and line two that's why you could see that it's solar two and solar one over here and I had to catch two bus bars so each fuse can connect either to one or the other and the CT clamps literally just wrap around the wires and they travel inside through this uh, connector over here. Now, two more things that are very, very important. You can see over here, I have two more lines that come into the house. These are separate lines. So these are specifically ran separately to this fuse over here and this fuse over here. And the reason is that the Grita inverters need to be separated from everything else in the house. And uh, I can only explain that on a piece of paper to see why is it like that. So this is a diagram of how the solar system is hooked up right now. So you have the pole, you have line one, line two, neutral coming in. You have 110 volts over here, 110 volts over here, but in between the, the, the line one and line two, you have 20, 220 volts. So this is how the system works. So in the meter, we have the neutral, we have L2, L1, coming out of the meter and going into my fuse box. Now, because these lines over here are super short, I cannot put a CT clamp on them because they are literally next to each other, as you see in this video. And then the meter just has the lines going in to the panel this way. So I have no access to this, to these lines. And therefore, the GTIL Grita inverter doesn't work for me because of that reason. That particular system needs the CT clamps to be installed on the main line. So these are the main lines. So what you do is you install a CT clamp over here, a CT clamp over here, you connect them together, and then you send that information to the GTIL 2000. This device, what it does, so that's why it's called the race to zero system, because if you have a consumption of, let's say, a thousand watts, to make it simple for everybody. So you have between these two lines, a thousand watts. The, the, the GTIL gets that information in the system and he, it will try to produce a thousand watts. That way, there is a race to zero. So this line, as soon as this one produces power and it, and, and it pushes it into the panel, right? So it pushes it into the panel. Then the power flows in that direction. And then this one automatically starts to be reduced by 1000. So it will show up as zero. So 
It's called raised to zero because this one always tries to see no consumption on the main lines. But because the meter box and the meter are so close to me, I cannot put these CT clamps on it. So I have no access to them and I only can see my bus bars, right? Because there's no nothing in between them. Now I could I could install them over here, right? Because here or here, it doesn't matter. It'll work the same way. But this part on top of the meter, it's not mine to work with. So because of that, I would interfere with, with stuff that is behind the meter and that's questionable, so you don't want to touch this part. And because I cannot touch it over here, the GTIL one uh, 2000, this one is not going to work for me. So in my case, what I have is I have my inverters, right? I have the uh, 650 watt inverters that are not uh, raised to zero, but they are mat matching. So these are the matching inverters. So how do they work? It's a different system. You see these two fuses. So I have two fuses, one for each line because I have two of these inverters, right? And then the power goes in and they have their own separate line. So each one has their own separate line. And one of the lines travel through the panel and goes into the first fuse. So this one goes to this fuse and this one goes to this fuse, okay? These are two separate fuses in the panel that these are providing power direct, directly into the boss bars. And then these are the fuses for everywhere else in the house. And they are separated to line one and line two. So all the wires that are coming from the line one are CT clamped over here. There's a sensor. And all the wires that are on line two, which is here, this is neutral, uh, are CT clamped over here, right? So I have one CT clamp, two CT clamps, and they are connected together, and they are sending information in the house to these Grita inverters to produce power. Because these two breakers are not part of the CT clamps, right? So they are not going through the CT clamps. You don't bundle these with the CT clamps. What these ones do is that the CT clamp reads power consumption. So this CT clamp reads, let's say, 500 watts on line one, and uh, this CD clamp over here, uh, 500 watts on line two, right? So L1, L2. The signal gets put together as a 1,000 watt consumption. Uh, the signal gets pushed through the CD clamps to these meters over here, and they will produce a 1,000 watts to match okay so because the systems are separated these are a matching system not a race to zero if you would bundle this two fuses so these two wires that are coming from this grid time inverters you will put them into the cd clamp so if you put them into the cd clamp over here what happened is let's say that you have a 500 watt demand through the lines that goes into your house if this is bundled over here the 500 watts that you demand with the 500 watts that this one can produce, they get canceled out, raised to zero, right? But these don't work that way. So as soon as they see no consumption, they will stop. And when they stop, they will not be able to produce any power and therefore you're gonna have consumption and it will be a, a feedback loop like that. So they cannot work that way. They just cannot work that way. They need to be separated into the panel. The main advantage is that because you have separate fuses over here, these are separate than all these lines that go through the house. If there is any kind of like a safety concern, uh, one of them shorts out or whatever, this fuse trips, this fuse trips, uh, the line is rated for 20 amps, they only put six or seven amps. So uh, if something happens and they have a big short inside, this fuse trips, this fuse trips, and then everything else in the house works exactly the same way as it worked before. So it doesn't, they don't affect each other. But that's the difference between the race to zero and the matching systems. This is a matching system. So the numbers over here will never become zero. Here, they become zero. But here, they never become zero. These are always reading what the consumption in the house is and trying to match that through the probes. Therefore, nothing gets pulled out of the network. It's a fairly smart system from that perspective. I think it's a little bit more complicated. This one is a little bit more simple. But in my case, this didn't work out over here. Plus, 
this grid tie inverter, even though this one is cheaper than three of these, which are more expensive than this, if this one goes bad, you lost your entire inverter, so it's all gone. Where if this one, one of them goes bad, then you have two of them left, so you still have 1,250, 1,300 watts coming into the house. So it's more modular, so you just replace one system instead of one big one if it goes bad. And also, the si they are kind of like the same size, this one and this one are the same size, but then these have better cooling because, you know, to pushing 2,000 watts through this system at a constant 2,000 watts all the time could be a little bit of a burden on it and, and the cooling could be a little bit of a problem. So well, this is how these inverters work. The second reason is I got them because initially I started on a 24 volt system and you cannot really find 24 volt systems out there. And my system was really, really small in the beginning. And I got into that trap where I can't really get away from it. So initially I started with a 650 watt. Now this one at full power, do the math. 600 watts an hour can do six kilowatts in 10 hours. It can do about 14 kilowatts a day, right? So I thought that's gonna be enough. I'm gonna run one at full power and that's gonna be fine, right? And that's the easiest way to save money. But the problem is that it can only produce 650 watts, right? So if I have a thousand watt load, what happens? I can only produce 650 watts. So I'm pulling 400 watts out of the network or 350. So I bought a second inverter. And then now between the two of them, now I have a potential of producing 30 kilowatts a day, theoretically, if I could run them at full power, 30 kilowatts a day. So why should be covered, right? Well, I got a third one. Why? Because what happens is that sometimes I had lows that were over 1300 watts. So they could produce 1300 watts and I have like those short loads for more than 1300. For example, you turn on the microwave, 1800 watts, or you run air fryer and dishwasher at the same time, 2400 watts, right? So then I've got the third one to match up to 2100, right? So now I have 2100, three times 650. Actually, they do above 700, so 2100, right? And I could easily use an extra one, to be very honest with you, because um, sometimes I, I go 2500, I go 3000 watts, but for a very, very short periods of time. This one pays itself off the fastest, this, this first one. Then the second one helps, but it takes a while to get paid off. And then the third one, it's I'm getting into the pennies and dimes. So um, the main reason I got the third one is to take load off these. I don't run them at full power. So right now, because the power is distributed in between 752 watts right now pulling in the house, but each one is doing only 250. So they, they run a little bit at a lower power and maybe they will last longer. I can't tell you that. For that, you'll have to stay for a later on video when I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna say if they did well or not. So thanks for watching.